This time on Jairus of All, I finally finish the most complicated pain in the butt knife I have ever made. Weeks of work, here we go. If you're new to this build series or you've been following it, I feel like I have not done a very good job of explaining what I'm trying to accomplish with this build of these Manus Blades. And I can't think of any better way to transfer the picture that is in my head to your head than this really crappy drawing that I did on a whiteboard. When I say that I'm making fully functional Manus Blades from Cyberpunk, I mean it. They're gonna do everything they do in the game with the exception of my arm still existing. So it'll be a slightly thicker arm to fit all this stuff on. But on the carbon fiber frame that I've already built in part whatever of this build series, there will be microcontrollers that run the whole operation, which includes big servos that lift up the movement arms to get the knife down out of the socket that it sits in on the arm, and then a pneumatic system to make the blade extend, a locking system, and servos that release that locking system for it to retract. It'll be able to extend the whole way forward and give me about 24 inches of extra reach with it. And when it sets down, it will go back down into a bunch of skin panels that cover the whole thing to make it actually look like it's an arm, all of which will be run by servos to make them get out of the way, kind of like my Iron Man build that I did. And all of this stuff is going to be contained within the arm or in the special jacket that I'm making from Cyberpunk, which will be a Patreon exclusive video. Hopefully this gives you a full understanding of what I'm actually trying to accomplish with this. And now, onto the build. While I was doing all the carbon fiber stuff for the last video, I spent late nights out in the garage working on all of the blade and sheath parts to get them finally completed. And here are the things that I worked on during my late nights. On the holes on both sides, I countersunk all of them so that they would accept the countersunk screws and then I ground the nuts down that go on the other side so that they were countersunk so that it would be flat when all of the fasteners were installed on both sides. The next issue was that I was using grease to allow the blade to slide in and out very well, but it was thick and it was slowing the blade's movement down. So I needed to change to oil so that it would slide faster, but I still needed lubrication. So I used Delrin. The stuff doesn't stick to anything. In fact, it's self-lubricating. So I couldn't glue into place so I had to grind little grooves and drill holes so that it would mechanically lock into place on the parts that needed slidey bits on them. Then I used a heat gun to heat up the metal and the plastic. No! And once the plastic was liquid, I squished it together to get it to lock into those places and then I trimmed the excess off to give me a custom slider. My idea for locking the blade in the extended position was to use liner locks. So I cut out two little strips of metal on the sides so that when the blade moved past, they would fall in behind it and keep it out. But to retract those, I needed to drill and tap holes to install little tiny bolts that I ground the heads off of so that I could still assemble and disassemble the whole thing. And then I put those in, welded them in place, ground it back flat so that I maintain my tolerances inside when the blade was sliding past the locking system. And I drilled little holes to put little pieces of rubber o-ring in to act as bumpers to keep the blade from ripping itself apart when it's slamming from the front to the back and vice versa. And now that all that stuff has been done to it, this is how it's functioning currently. It comes out not far enough to lock in place. If I hold these in the outer position, it seals it a little more. It comes out way harder, but still isn't enough to lock because the bumpers that I have at the front are pushing it back a little too much for my locks to engage, but it does slide in and out a little bit more consistently. But my retract is not pulling hard enough to drag it back in. Time to fix those things. Naphtha takes grease off and I need to degrease them to make sure that they're clean. So this little aluminum foil trough will be perfect for me to be able to put them in, clean everything off, and then I can start doing the testing to see what is making these not function as well as they used to. all clean and I'm going to reassemble it without the outer plates so that I can see what's going on inside. Just those three parts. Mm, she's tight at the front. It's too much bumper. That's part of why it's sticking. The rubber bumpers are compressing into their recesses and then they're squishing out and they're pinching the blade. 
I had a feeling that might be the issue. Problem number one, the lock is interfering with the bar of metal. I scored it, I wanted to keep it close to that. That's an issue. It's holding a little hard at the front. So there's something else that's holding it up here. I do have ideas to fix the issues. Time to take it apart again. It's apart. <laughs> Finally, it takes a really long time. With it apart now, I can show you what my plan is. I'm gonna take all the surfaces that are in contact with each other, the movement surfaces, and polish them kind of with high grit sandpaper. And with this having that play around the knife part, there is a section where I can put in a chunk of O-ring on each side of the blade to seal it in there so that I'm not losing air from that portion. Basically what I want to do is try to do everything that I can that I can think of that will make this operate correctly before I put it back together and have to take it back apart again. I'm getting really tired of doing that. I use some Super 77 spray adhesive and put a variety of sandpaper grits onto sticks of metal so that I can polish these surfaces. Well, sand the surfaces back so that they're nice and polished and smooth. That way, hopefully everything slides a little bit easier. So on all the different surfaces, I need to sand my way up through the grits. I don't know if I'll have to go the whole way up or not, just until they're shiny and feel exceptionally smooth compared to what they were. Now that everything's polished, I think I won't need grease for it, so I just put a couple drops of pneumatic oil in there and just a couple of screws to see if it works. And the rubber is not binding, and it seems to be sliding pretty well and locking in place like it's supposed to. So maybe problem solved? The only issue is I'm not getting enough air pressure unless I seal this thing, so I need to use these. I don't know which one I wanna use. I have Honda Bond, which is a semi-drying liquid gasket maker. I have gasket dressing and sealant, which since I opened it, it looks like Loctite. It doesn't look like that at all. And I just have contact cement. All of those would work as sealants for this housing. I'm not sure which would work, work best. I think the Honda Bond will, but that means that I'll have to assemble the whole thing with a tiny amount of Honda Bond so that it doesn't squish to the inside, then oil it, and then fingers crossed hope for the best that it works and it didn't squish to the inside and tries to block everything. But I still need to figure out what I'm gonna use for my retract. The elastic was not very strong. I do have some spear gun bands that I could try to trim down into thin little bands that I can install on this. But first I need to make the part here. I need to close up these gaps so that air doesn't leak out. And I have an idea for this. So when the pressurized air comes in the back of this and the blade moves forward, it should theoretically stay very sealed the whole way up to the point where it locks in place. But with these on and the liner locks there, as it moves forward, once it uncovers those grooves, that's an air channel for all the pressure to escape out of the holes in the side plate that covers it right there. In order to stop that, I'm going to use Gasket Maker, RTV, to put some filler in there, and that will allow them to be sealed, but still move. I tested a couple different kinds of tape and surfaces to see what this Gasket Maker would readily peel off from, and packing tape worked great. So I have that behind it, and try to fill this entire groove as thoroughly as I can. This should be fully cured now, so I can cut it. I'm gonna do it at an angle so that it'll seal back up, but it can move out. At least that's the thought. I'm going to possibly final assemble this thing, but I need to which of these non-setting gasket makers I'm going to use. This is a gasket dressing. This is Honda Bond. It's made for two stroke cases that get taken apart all the time, that kind of thing. 
and it is really, really gooey. This doesn't ever fully set like normal gasket maker does. It has really high viscosity. That way when you have differences in pressure, it will flex and then go back. Whereas this stuff I've never used before and it's made to go on a gasket and it is not nearly as gooey. It looks almost like Loctite for bolts. So I'm not going to use this, which was the original plan and I'm just gonna use my Honda Bond. The simplest solution I can think of to the elastic being an issue is just to use a rubber band. This is basically what's inside a piece of elastic. It just has a nylon sheath to keep it from abrading, but it shouldn't be that much of an issue because this rides on those micro bearings and then that track down the top of it. So I'll get more strength because there's more rubber to help pull this back in. And it can stretch a lot further because it doesn't have that nylon that constricts on the outside and limits how far it can extend to. Putting it together this time is the combination of all of the little tricks and ideas that I've had to make this thing finally work consistently. So now it's time for this semi-final assembly. And if it does work, then I can swap out for the countersunk bolts and actually finish this thing. Time for testing. Here we go. It's leaking heavily from that hole in the back. Obviously that test was a fail. I didn't have the pressure turned up very high, but I don't want it to because I'll run out of CO2 fast and it could cause other problems. But once I yanked this thing back apart to see why it wasn't working, a little bit of the Honda Bond had made it in through the cracks and it was binding up and it wasn't sliding very well. But that was not the major problem. That was because I had switched to this rubber band and I had drastically underestimated how small this would get when it extends and how much air it would allow to escape from the hole where it leaves the sheath in the back. Because of that, I do have one more idea to stop that. And that is to enclose my retraction system, which means I'm going to design and 3D print a cover that goes on, that goes from the back to the front, along the top, and houses that. That we don't have to worry about that hole in the back because the whole thing is enclosed. And then if that doesn't work, then I've really got a problem. files for these 3D printed parts as well as all of the other 3D printed parts that I'm going to make for this project and the plans and name on the table is available to Patreon supporters. Link in the description if you're into that sort of thing. I gotta wait for that to fully cure and I don't want to mess it up so I'm gonna let it sit till tomorrow but you get to see it right now it's not working I guess you'll have to wait too just kidding here it is I strapped it to this foam because I was afraid that the tape wouldn't pull the carbon fiber to the thing hard enough so I put a little bit of tension on it with that but it's fully cured and it's time to chop it out. Oh. 
Oh yeah, look at that peel. Comes right off. As long as carbon fiber is fully cured, the aluminum foil peels off really well. And electrical tape does too, but some of it may have gotten underneath the edges. That's actually a really nice finish too. Forged carbon fiber finish. I put this carbon fiber on because this piece that I printed was extremely thin on the top because I want this to be as short as possible and adding something else to make it taller is just gonna make it harder to hide on my arm. So I printed it as thin as I could knowing I could put an extremely thin layer of carbon on top of that to make it as strong as it needs to be without making it any taller. It would not have been strong enough to hold the pressure. But now it is, for sure. And it looks cool. <laughs> Look at that. Came off so easy. This stuff's hard to trim. So I'm gonna use my snips to do it. And then once I get it back close, I'll have to sand it back, which means I gotta get all suited up again because itchy. that finished, it's time to do the test with it put on. But to make sure that everything is clean and is sliding correctly, I assembled this without the face plate on it just to make sure that it would work. And when I did it, my rubber band broke in half. So I went back to the elastic, which I'm going to hold with my finger right now. No matter which orientation I hold it in, when I release the locks, it slides back in perfectly like it's supposed to. Now I know that this can slide. I know that I can seal the air in. So I'm gonna do the rest of the stuff to finish this. That way maybe this time when I put it together, it can be the final, final assembly. Gotta make it look cool. done this before on projects and I'm about to do it again because I'm going to electro etch down into the steel to give myself a false blood groove that continues from the blood groove on the blade, just like they have in the game. I may have been a little hasty in pulling off the masking from the previous one because I wanted it on there so that I could polish the blood groove and then remove the little teeth thing that I used as a guide to put it on and polish that area to differentiate this even more during the next step where I'll peel this off, put the opposite mask on and then gun blew it. But I still need to polish these edges to make them look like they're false beveled, you know? goes. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
That's one fastener fully installed, fully recessed, painted, torqued, ready to go. So I need to do that whole process 21 more times. I'll see you next spring. Everything's installed. Time to test it. I'm actually extremely worried about this because this is so much work. I wish I could cross a thousand fingers. Okay, what pressure are we at, Bryce? 75. 75 PSI. <laughs> Perfect. Will it go back in though? Come on. Retract. You know you want to. <laughs> I'm not sure if my elastic is pulling. It's not. That means I gotta take this housing off and see how much of the Honda Bond squished into the channel where the elastic is at. Because that's for sure what is holding it back. But I'm really tired. It's been a very long day doing all this stuff. So I'll see you tomorrow. I said the next day, but that turned into a couple of days because there was a lot more wrong with this thing than I thought. I was way off. And I had a bunch of stuff to fix and I'm so tired of messing with it that I didn't film it. So now I'm gonna run through all the things that I had to do to make this work consistently as it sits now. Initially, I thought the only problem was that Honda Bond had gotten inside and squished out of the cracks and bound up the blade. That was true. There was a little bit in there. Because the tolerances are so tight, it took just a tiny little bit to make this thing not work anymore. But after I had cleaned that out and put it back together, it still didn't work. Because the pneumatic oil that I was using to lubricate the blade sliding had started to expand the RTV that I had put in the liner lock slots, and that needed shaved back. But then I found that there was actually a tolerance issue on one piece of metal in one tiny spot where it was a couple thousandths too big, so I took the whole thing apart shaved that area down, mirror polished it back, put it all back together, and then it worked. But it still wouldn't retract. It was because I had put those rubber bumpers at the front and back. So I replaced those with Delrin at the front and the back because it actually dampens the impact of the blade moving back and forth even better. And another problem that was happening was that the Honda Bond that I had used to put the air guide on the top, the air seal, has a solvent base. And then whatever that solvent is, was messing with the rubber in the elastic retraction cord and making it weaker, and it was lengthening on its own, and it wasn't working. So I had to replace that and find an alternative to the Honda Bond, and I used tacky tape. And I also made it a lot easier to replace the elastic because I installed a stud at the front instead of putting the elastic into a hole and then anchoring it in place with a set screw from the side. Now I just have a little loop in the elastic and it goes over a stud at the front, which is covered up by this so it doesn't look weird. And it's a lot easier to put a new piece of elastic in. All in all, this thing's starting to work pretty well. Weeks of work have led to the moment where I can do this with this blade consistently in any direction. Down. Up, side, it's upside down, Let's see. Up, down, side to side, what's your point? What's going on is I'm releasing the air pressure with this into the back, which pushes the blade forward. And then once it's forward, the liner locks are spring loaded, these little studs sticking out and it locks the blade in place and it will not return until I pull on those and then it goes back in. Now that this and this are completed, all I have left to do is install the movement arms that will connect the two and make them into one, which is really exciting. And then, you know, install all the servos that'll make everything move and the automation system and the skin panels that need to move around and get out of the way. So not much left to do. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time when I continue the first truly real, fully functional, actual Manus Blades from Cyberpunk 2077 in real life. Bye.